Do you experience regular heartburn? If so, you might be suffering from gastroesophageal reflux disease. Welcome to JHP Medical, I'm Dr. Hart Pinto and if you like this video please subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our latest videos. So what is gastroesophageal reflux disease? Whilst it may be normal to experience symptoms of reflux from time to time, if you suffer from repeated episodes of heartburn, a diagnosis of gastroesophageal reflux disease is likely. This condition is also known as GERD in the US and GORD in the UK. Reflux or heartburn is the burning sensation you experience when acid from your stomach travels back towards your throat. So why does it occur? There are several reasons why gastroesophageal reflux can occur. The first of which is the failure of the lower esophageal sphincter. Under normal conditions, your gullet, also known as your esophagus, permits the passage of chewed food into the acid-containing stomach. Where your gullet meets the top of your stomach, a ring of strong muscles exist called a sphincter. If a failure of the sphincter occurs, acid and partially digested food contents can travel into your gullet, giving you the symptoms of reflux. H. pylori is a bacteria which can worsen your symptoms of reflux. The infection can also cause ulceration of the stomach or even your bowels. Failed peristalsis. So normally in response to reflux acid and partially digested food contents, your gullet will create a downward wave of muscle contractions, known as peristalsis. This directs any regurgitated food contents back towards the stomach. Where this fails, reflux can occur. Gastroparesis. You may also be suffering from symptoms due to the slower movement of stomach contents into your bowels. Where a delayed passage occurs, your risk of refluxing stomach contents increases. Hiatus hernias. So for a few patients, the uppermost part of your stomach may lie within your chest rather than your abdomen. This unusual positioning of the stomach reduces the efficiency of the muscular sphincter at its entrance. If you have this, your doctor will call it a hiatus hernia. Who gets gastroesophageal reflux disease and are there any risk factors? Gastroesophageal reflux disease is a very common condition. It affects around one in four people. Several risk factors exist which increase the likelihood of you suffering from GORD or GERD and these include if you are overweight as this increases the pressure on your stomach. Pregnancy also puts pressure on the stomach as the baby grows. Patients who have the hiatus hernia previously discussed. If you experience increased levels of anxiety or stress, any conditions which may slow your stomach emptying, such as diabetes, any connective tissue disorders, if you're a smoker, or you consume spicy or fatty foods, or drink too much alcohol or caffeinated drinks. Gastroesophageal reflux disease is also associated with non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, such as ibuprofen. So what are the most commonly reported symptoms? The most common symptoms reported are usually heartburn, experienced as a burning sensation in your chest, and this may be worse after eating or lying flat at night. This may also be described as a chest pain. You may have some difficulty swallowing or have the sensation of the lump at the back of your throat. You may get regurgitation of food or liquid and may experience an acidic or metallic taste in your mouth. Less common symptoms you may experience are difficulty or pain when swallowing, tooth decay or bad breath from the damage from the stomach acid, excess salivation, a worsening of your asthma symptoms, a persisting cough, or hoarseness of your voice due to the irritation of your vocal cords whilst lying flat. Some patients may also note that they've got a poor quality of sleep and not feeling refreshed in the morning. So there's a number of red flags that we need to look out for. Some of the symptoms of gastroesophageal reflux disease can cross over with other serious conditions, including cancers. Therefore, it's especially important you are reviewed by your doctor, who will be able to ensure there isn't anything more sinister causing your symptoms. Please be aware, self-diagnosis can be dangerous and you should seek professional medical assessment. If you're experiencing any of the following symptoms, then you should seek an urgent review with your doctor. If you notice any evidence of blood present in your vomit or in your poo, a development of a swelling or mass in your tummy, reduction in your appetite or unexplained weight loss, any difficulty swallowing or persisting vomiting, 
or any persistent symptoms despite medical treatment. So how will my doctor diagnose my gourd? Well, good. A diagnosis of gastroesophageal reflux disease is a clinical one, made by your doctor after reviewing your symptoms and performing a thorough examination. As part of your workup, your doctor may perform additional investigations. The gold standard investigation is a 24-hour pH test, looking at the acidity in your gullet. In reality, this is rarely performed. The test requires a catheter to be placed into your gullet through your nose, and from this, the acidity levels are then monitored throughout the day. Gastroscopy is a useful examination where a thin fiber optic camera is inserted via your mouth, allowing for visualization of your gullet and your stomach. At the same time, your doctor may take a sample to assess for the presence of H. pylori. Your doctor can also test for this bacteria via a blood test, a stool test, or a breath test. Your doctor might order some additional blood tests to rule out any anemia and organize a special x-ray examination called a barium meal to assess for the presence of a hiatus hernia. So how can gastroesophageal reflux disease be managed? First, let us address lifestyle factors. Lifestyle changes are powerful tools which we can use to help us naturally ease symptoms of acid reflux. Around half of patients can effectively control their reflux symptoms with lifestyle changes alone. Not bad, eh? We've discussed the negative effects of carrying too much weight on your reflux symptoms. Getting to a healthy body weight can make all the difference in your symptoms. This is best achieved through diet and regular exercise. This combination has the additional benefit of improving your mental well-being, reduces your risk of heart attacks, strokes and cancers. And that's no bad thing. So what about diet? I can't stress enough how important your meal routine is. Small and frequent meals are best. You must make sure that you sit upright during meals and avoid bending over, heavy lifting or lying flat after meals. These techniques all help reduce the strain on your stomach. If you're experiencing your reflux symptoms at night, you must avoid late night meals and finish your evening meal at least three to four hours before going to bed. Propping up the head end of the bed with foam wedges or additional pillows allows gravity to keep stomach acid in the stomach. Wedges can be purchased online and I'll include a link where you can purchase these in the notes below. I also recommend that you keep a food diary as this will help you identify any food triggers. Also, recording the frequency of your symptoms can help your doctor tailor your treatment plan. Some of the more common triggers people report and are best avoided are spicy or fatty foods such as curries or pizzas. Foods which are high in fat take longer to digest in the stomach and so stay there for longer. The longer the food remains in your stomach, the more likely you are to experience reflux symptoms. Smoking and alcohol can both reduce the strength of the muscular ring at the base of your gullet, increasing the reflux symptoms. Alcohol also has a direct effect on the lining of your gullet, increasing the susceptibility to stomach acids. Smoking reduces the production of the natural alkaline saliva, which would normally help to neutralize any reflux to stomach acid. So where possible, reducing your alcohol intake and cutting down your smoking can provide a great deal of benefit. Maintaining your mental health is also a crucial factor. You may find that during stressful or emotional periods, your symptoms can worsen. Therefore, it's important to avoid these precipitating factors where possible. So what about medications? For some, lifestyle changes alone are not enough and may not provide the immediate relief that you require. Thankfully, several medications are available over the counter and you may have already tried some of these. Available without prescriptions are usually antacids or alginates. Antacids, available as chewable tablets or liquids, work by neutralizing the acidity of your stomach contents. Alginates, on the other hand, help provide the protective coating your gullet and stomach needs, stopping stomach acids from irritating their lining. Available from your doctor, proton pump inhibitors such as lanzoprazole or H2 antagonists such as ranitidine act within the lining of the stomach, reducing acid production. Proton pump inhibitors are usually more effective and are safe to use. Therefore, they're recommended for first-line treatment. Most patients will notice a drastic improvement with their symptoms with effective medical management. So it's important to speak to your doctor about this. 
So if you're one of the few where lifestyle changes plus medications have been unsuccessful in managing your symptoms, you may require the input from an upper GI surgeon. Surgeons can offer procedures such as Nissen film duplication, where the top of the stomach is wrapped around the lower part of your gullet. This helps reduce any hiatus hernias and improve your symptoms of reflux. So what about my prognosis? Many patients can achieve adequate relief from their gastroesophageal reflux disease through a combination of lifestyle changes and medication. Only a very small minority will ever require any surgical treatment. You need to be aware that if your GERD remains uncontrolled, you are at increased risks of complications. In some patients, persistent acid attacking the lining of the gut can cause precancerous changes in the cells. This is called Barrett's esophagus. While left untreated, this can even lead to cancer. Other complications include ulceration of the esophagus or even a narrowing called a stricture, making it more difficult to swallow. Acid reflux can also worsen your symptoms of asthma or even cause inflammation at the back of the throat, resulting in hoarseness of your voice. So I hope you've enjoyed this video reviewing the management of gastroesophageal reflux disease and the associated acid reflux symptoms. Don't forget to subscribe and interact with us by giving us a thumbs up or leaving a comment down below. By doing this, you help support the growth of our channel and our mission to help educate as many people about their medical conditions as possible and hopefully improve your quality of life. This video does not provide any individual medical advice and is intended for information purposes only. Do not consider this as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. Don't ignore professional medical advice in seeking treatment because of something you've heard here. If you believe you may have a medical emergency, immediately call your doctor or ambulance service. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Take a break or